show me buttons. No. Nope. Thank you very much. I have a prepared statement, and then afterwards I'll be happy to take any questions you may have. So my name is Patricia Lohr, and I am medical director, as you've heard, of British Pregnancy Advisory Service, or BPAS. I trained in obstetrics and gynecology at the Harbor UCLA Medical Center in Torrance, California, and I followed this with a fellowship in contraception and family planning research, as well as a master's degree in public health at the University of Pittsburgh. I am a fellow of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and of the U.S. Society of Family Planning. Um, I also hold an honorary fellowship from the UK Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Health Care. During my career, I have focused on the delivery of evidence-based abortion care and family planning. And this has included developing protocols, training doctors and nurses, providing services, and conducting research. I am currently a member of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists Abortion Task Force, for which I am currently working on postgraduate curriculum development and a pathway for the care of women needing abortions who are medically complex. I am a founding member and treasurer of the British Society of Abortion Care Providers, which is an RCOG specialist society, and I currently sit on the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence Termination of Pregnancy Guideline Committee, and that organization has been tasked with the development of a new evidence-based guideline on abortion care for England. I was a member of the development group who wrote the last RCOG guidance on abortion care, and I have contributed to other national and international guidelines on contraception. A bit about BPAS. BPAS is a charity which was established in 1968 to provide not-for-profit abortion care that the National Health Service at the time either could not or would not provide. Today, we provide contraception, pregnancy options counseling, abortion care, and miscarriage management for more than 40 centers across England, Scotland, and Wales. As part of our charitable remit, we also provide education on the causes and consequences of unwanted pregnancy, and our nurses visit schools and colleges to provide information about contraception and fertility to young people so that they may be empowered with the knowledge to make their own reproductive decisions. The majority of BPAS services are provided under contract to the NHS, meaning that the vast majority of women that we see do not pay for their treatment. This now includes women from Northern Ireland, whose care is funded by the UK government and will be managed through a central booking service. The remainder are fee-paying patients who overwhelmingly come from the Republic of Ireland. We provide care at or below cost to women from Ireland in recognition of the financial challenges they have already faced in reaching the UK, and we have a policy of never turning away any woman based on her ability to pay. While it is true that I am someone who believes strongly that abortion care is a fundamental part of women's reproductive health care, I am here today to provide you with factual information on the experience of Irish women who travel to the UK, how their abortion care is provided, and the limitations of the current framework for providing the highest standard of care. We, as an organization, have no financial interest in Ireland changing its laws, and we will continue to provide not-for-profit services to Irish women if they cannot access abortion at home. In the UK, with the exception of Northern Ireland, women can access lawful abortion if they meet the terms of the 1967 Abortion Act, and two doctors agree in good faith that she does so. Any abortion outside of that framework falls under the 1861 Offenses Against the Person Act and carries the threat of life in prison for both the woman and anyone who helps her. All abortions must be performed in NHS hospitals or specifically licensed premises, such as those run by BPAS. The majority of abortions are performed under Ground C which stipulates that the pregnancy has not exceeded its 24th week and that the continuation of the pregnancy would involve risk greater than if the pregnancy were terminated of injury to the physical or mental health of the pregnant woman. A smaller number are performed under ground E, that if the pregnancy continued, the baby would be born with a serious mental or physical disability. The vast majority of abortions, 92% last year, were carried out at under 13 weeks gestation, and 81% were carried out at under 10 weeks. This is in no small part due to the increasing availability of medical abortion, which can be offered at some of the earliest gestations. 
Medical abortion involves taking two medications, mifepristone and misoprostol, ideally 24 to 48 hours apart for maximum efficacy. Medical abortions account for more than 60% of the total abortions performed, although this method becomes less acceptable as gestational age advances. Small numbers of abortions are performed after 20 weeks gestation and account for around 1% of the total number of abortions performed. Some of these will be for reasons of fetal anomaly, which are not detected until the 20 week scan. Others will involve late detection of pregnancy, sometimes as a result of contraception use, which has disturbed bleeding patterns, so that a missed period is not interpreted as a potential marker of pregnancy. And while teenage pregnancy have declined dramatically over the last decade, younger women with an unwanted pregnancy are proportionally more likely to need a later abortion. This may be because the pregnancy was not suspected or because she's felt unable to confide in anyone about her circumstances. So overall, the picture of abortion in the UK is as follows. The abortion rate has been stable for a number of years at about 16 per 1,000 women. And that's largely unchanged since the 1990s. The age profile at which women have abortions is, however, changing. The teenage pregnancy rate has decreased dramatically and more older women are requesting abortion care. And it is the case today at BPAS that we see more women over the age of 35 requesting abortion than under the age of 20. It is estimated that one in three women will need an abortion in their lifetimes and that one in five pregnancies end in abortion. The abortion rate in England and Wales is similar to that in other socially and economically comp comparable countries such as France and Sweden. That is to say that the UK is not an outlier with regard to its abortion rate. There is, in any event, no evidence that laws influence the number of abortions. The respected Guttmacher Institute has shown, for example, that the rate of abortions in countries with highly restrictive laws is comparable with that in countries with more liberal frameworks. To address specifically the women from Ireland needing abortion care, last year 3,625 women were recorded in the annual abortion statistics produced by the Department of Health for England as having given an Irish address when they presented for treatment. Over the past 10 years, the number of women giving Irish addresses has fallen from 4,600 in 2008. This decline may be underpinned by a number of factors, including better access to contraceptive services and emergency contraception, increased access to abortion medication, as well as raised awareness that free treatment can be obtained with a UK address. A paper published in the British Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology in July reported that between January of 2010 and December 2015, 5,650 women from Ireland and Northern Ireland contacted one online provider alone to request medication termination of pregnancy. BPAS has been providing abortion care to women from Ireland since 1968. There is little difference between uh, the reasons why women from Ireland present compared to those from the UK. They are diverse and they are multifaceted. They involve financial hardship, knowing that one's family is complete, inadequate partner or family support, domestic violence, or simply a woman feeling that she is not in a position to care for a baby at that point in her life. While some abortions uh, take place of pregnancies that were planned and indeed wanted, such as those for fetal anomaly, the majority of women we see were trying to avoid pregnancy when they conceived. In fact, the majority of women we treated from Ireland were using some form of contraception when they conceived. And we undertook an analysis of 2,703 women from Ireland who were treated at BPAS over a four-year period and found the following. 3% were using a, a method such as an intrauterine contraceptive, implant, or sterilization. 29% were using injections, oral contraceptives, the pill, patch, or ring. And almost 50% were using condoms, diaphragms, or fertility awareness-based methods. Only 20% were not using a method at all at the time that they conceived. Of Irish women who receive uh, abortion care in the UK, 70% are married or with a partner, and nearly half have already had at least one previous birth 
meaning they are already mothers. All this is in keeping with information that we have for women seeking abortion from the UK. What is different for Irish women? Well, as previously noted, medical abortion now accounts for the majority of early terminations in the UK. Many women prefer it as it is akin to a natural miscarriage and they can avoid an anesthetic and they can be at home when the pregnancy passes. In contrast, the majority of early abortions provided for Irish women are performed surgically, 71% compared to 28% for women resident in England and Wales. This is because for financial and practical reasons, many women traveling from Ireland often aim to fly in and out of the UK within a day. And as medical abortion involves leaving the clinic after taking the second set of medication and going home to pass the pregnancy, it is not clinically optimal for that to happen on the way to the airport or the flight home. Effectively, this means that women from Ireland are in all practical senses denied a choice of abortion method. Irish women also have abortions at slightly later gestations than women having abortions who are resident in England and Wales. Residents of England and Wales, proportionally, the vast majority present between three and nine weeks gestation, 81%, compared to 69% of women from the Republic of Ireland presenting at three to nine weeks of gestation. At 10 to 12 weeks of gestation, proportionally, that represents 11% of residents from England and Wales and 16% from those Republic of Ireland. And at the latest gestation, 20 weeks or over, that's 2% for women who are resident of England and Wales compared to 3.2% for women who are re residents of the Republic of Ireland. Nearly a third of abortions, 31%, for women from the Republic of Ireland are performed at 10 weeks or over, compared to 20% for women resident in England and Wales. Abortion is an extremely safe procedure, but the earlier in pregnancy it is performed, the better for the women's physical and mental well-being. Reasons for later presentation will include the time that it takes to organize travel and make logistical arrangements, particularly for those with work and childcare commitments. A note about contraception. All women who receive NHS funded treatment at BPAS are also entitled to contraception counseling. They can choose from the full range of methods available and if they wish to, they can leave with the method of their choice. Provision of contraception at the time of abortion has several advantages. The woman is known not to be pregnant. It confers immediate protection against pregnancy and with regard to implants and intrauterine contraception increases the likelihood that she will receive the method compared to women who must return to undergo insertion at a later date. Irish women who attend BPAS are also offered contraceptive counseling and the overwhelming majority do take it up. However, because of the costs associated with receiving their chosen method, as well as the logistics of integrating contraception care with travel, in our analysis, only 31% chose to receive their preferred method from BPAS. This is compared to 85% of women we see who are funded for their contraception care. This means that an important opportunity to enable women to make a choice about contraception and receive that method is lost. It is possible women do visit their GP or family planning clinic on return to Ireland and receive the method they have chosen, but we have no way of establishing this or following it up. Post-abortion care. All women undergoing an abortion at BPAS have access to a 24-hour telephone support line. And while follow-up appointments are only provided to those women who want them, all women know they can contact the clinic which treated them and return for a checkup or discuss their concerns at any time. Women from the Republic of Ireland, too, can access the telephone support line. But if they have any concerns or they need in-person care, they will typically access local services, which can prevent its own problems in view of the stigma and secrecy that continues to surround travel for abortion. Complications from abortion are uncommon, and serious complications are rare. In its best practice paper on comprehensive abortion care, the RCOG recommended that women are advised of the following risks. The risk of failure, one to two and 100 for either medical or surgical abortion. 
fewer than two in 100 surgical abortions and around five in 100 medical abortions are incomplete and need some form of intervention in order to complete the procedure. The following complications may occur. Blood loss needing transfusion, less than one in 1,000 in the first trimester, rising to about four in 1,000 at 20 weeks or more. Uterine rupture with second trimester medical abortion, less than one in 1,000. For cervical abortion, there's a, a low, similar risk of cervical trauma, less than one in 100 overall, but it is lower in the first trimester or of uterine perforation, which is approximately one to four per thousand, again, lower in the first trimester. It is sometimes necessary to provide further treatment for complications such as a blood transfusion, laparoscopy, laparotomy, and very rarely hysterectomy. An upper genital traction can, infection can occur after abortion with varying degrees of severity and most likely associated with pre-existing infection. In terms of the mental health impact of abortion, the risk of developing mental health problems is the same for a woman facing an unwanted pregnancy, whether she has an abortion or goes on to have the baby. While most women will not require further counseling, post-abortion counseling is indeed available to all women who've had an abortion at BPAS, either on the phone or in person. Needless to say, for women traveling from Ireland, the option of in-person counseling at BPAS would be difficult although this is available through some of the agencies in Ireland. For women undergoing abortion for fetal anomaly, we can advise on the transport of fetal remains for autopsy, burial, or cremation. Women from Ireland must take the fetal remains home themselves and find a carrier which will accept the remains on board. And if they do wish to have an autopsy or other texting, this would be self-funded. What can Ireland learn from the UK? If Ireland does in fact overhaul its abortion laws, and it is certainly not for me to prejudge, it would do well to avoid some of the pitfalls and problems that the UK framework presents. The 1967 Abortion Act was passed at a time when abortion provision was almost entirely surgical, and when all surgical procedures were more riskier than they are today. Against that backdrop, it is unsurprising that politicians stipulated that all procedures should be carried out in an NHS hospital or in specific premises licensed by the Secretary of State for Health, and that all such procedures should be performed by a doctor. Few could have imagined in 1967 that early abortion could be safely provided using medication. Our laws have prevented the provision of early medical abortion in line with guidance from the World Health Organization, which recommends that women should be able to use misoprostol at home once lawfully prescribed. This means that women can time the passing of their pregnancy and do not have to risk bleeding or miscarriage on the way home, nor do they have to attend multiple appointments. I mentioned earlier the number of women from Ireland using online abortion services, and it may surprise you to learn that women living in areas of the UK where funded legal abortion is available are also turning online. Over a four-month period alone, more than 500 women in England, Wales, and Scotland requested help from Women on Web, one of the online medication abortion providers. For some women, the multiple appointments, sometimes considerable distances from where they live were an absolute impediment to accessing lawful care. Our laws have also prevented the full development of nurse and midwife-led services that are now the standard of care in other areas like colposcopy. Nurses are lawfully able to provide surgical and medical miscarriage management using the same techniques as early termination, but are prohibited from providing that service to women needing abortion care. In terms of premises, there is no reason why early abortion, whether by vacuum aspiration or pills, could not be safely provided from a GP surgery. But again, our laws make that all but impossible. Keeping abortion within the criminal law as opposed to regulated by healthcare law, like all other procedures, can be hugely stigmatizing. Canada and parts of Australia have opted for the decriminalization of abortion regulating it through healthcare law and professional standards. There is no evidence that abortion is more widely used or indeed more available as a result. You do not need a criminal code to impose a time limit, for example. 
but keeping the procedure out with the criminal law and the subject of professional guidance and health care regulation means that lawful abortion care can be provided in accordance with the highest clinical standards and best practice. Ireland has the opportunity to create a humane abortion framework that is fit for the 21st century. I hope that the information that I have provided to you is helpful for this discussion, and I'm happy to take any questions you may have.